persons and others. Existentialism and phenomenology are the major philosophical branches that devote much discussion on the concept of interpersonal relations. These philosophies relate the concept of interpersonal relations to self-awareness and transcendence. The individual is primarily aware of himself, and it is this egocentric perspective that defines how he perceives and relates to reality. This awareness of individuality is called the self. The existential perspective defines interpersonal relations as the self being aware of the other. And this other generally refers to objects outside of personal experience, while it is often used by most philosophers to refer to other uh, individuals apart from the self. In simple terms, an individual is naturally aware of himself as a distinct being, which is self, and yet he is also aware that there are other beings apart from him, which is considered as the other. Intersubjectivity is the shared awareness and understanding among persons, and the interaction between the self and the other is related to the philosophical concept of intersubjectivity. It is evident in everyday social interactions, uh, the ability of human to agree and cooperate, uh, the existence of shared or common knowledge and consensus, and in shared emotions such as grief, joy, and love. As a closer look at everyday interaction, it reveals instances where the self interacts with the other. Uh, philosophers identify various levels of self-other interactions. First is the simple awareness of the existence of the other. Second, the awareness of the self as being seen by the other. And third, the dialogue. So let me explain each of them. The simple awareness of the existence of the other, when we see other people walking along the street, we are aware that they are other beings unique from us, and that they exist outside of our own awareness or perception. Next, the awareness of the self as being seen by other. Imagine, for instance, uh, that one of the people you are watching suddenly stops and looks straight at you. You are immediately aware of this person's action as an other. The stranger is looking at your direction. Also, you are aware of another significant fact. You know that the stranger staring at you is aware of you as a person. The self-consciousness is considered by philosophers as a defining characteristic of the self-other relationship. Now imagine that the person is not a stranger, but someone familiar, a family member, a friend, or even your crush. This awareness of the person staring at you will initially result in feelings of self-consciousness, sometimes shame. In fact, several questions will begin running in your head, such as, what is she thinking when she looks at me? Am I doing something wrong? Is there something wrong with the way I look? Is she about to say something to me? Hey, kabayan na naman! Na! Bijuhin ko! Sige! You are not allowed! Saksi mo ah! Mapriso ka! Agoy! The unique phenomenon of the human gaze is considered a defining characteristic which sets apart human interaction from the interaction of other species. Also, the awareness of the self in the other is an important element in all other aspects of interpersonal interaction because the way we act with other people is often influenced by our ideas of how these people see us. People treat you based on their idea of you and you treat people based on your idea of them. Therefore, if you have 
idea that our parents think of us as quiet and obedient, we often act that way with them. However, when we are with our friends and we think that they see us as outgoing and boisterous, we also adjust our behavior to, conf to conform with how we think they expect us to act. That's why, aside from the purely introverted and extroverted persons, there are people who are ambiverts. We also introverts can also be extroverted sometimes, depending on their energy. While also extroverted, people may have times they want to be alone and just think. So other examples refer to social context. How we behave in church is different from our behavior in a lively party. How we behave in the classroom is different from how we behave in the opening of a 100% discount store. So these actions are referred to by Marty Babur as seeming, where an individual presents himself or herself in certain ways when dealing with others. So Babur described persona as taking on a role or characters when dealing with certain people or when in uh, certain situations. According to the book, this is considered as an unconscious natural act on the part of human. However, there may be instances when people behave a certain way to intentionally deceive or manipulate. Third is the much deeper level of interaction called dialogue, which was identified by Babur, which refers to a genuine relationship established among individuals. A dialogue is made possible when the self realizes that the other is a genuine and unique individual. Again, it happens when two individuals begin to view each other as, as an other, that is, truly acknowledging each other's presence. And that is the beginning of an authentic relationship and uh, dialogue. How do relationships define the human person? Uh, different philosophical thoughts have different views on human relationships. Existentialists consider human relationships as a defining influence on human life. And according to the constructivist theory of knowledge, human relations shape knowledge and truth within a certain society. Meanwhile, phenomenologists argue that shared experience between person can shape the perception of reality. People often remember events more vividly when they are shared when they are shared with other people. And in many cases, the views of a person regarding an event can be shaped by the views of people he is with. So within society, individuals co coordinate their actions and maintain harmonious relationships to ensure order and the general welfare. Philosophers agree that it is important for humans to pursue and achieve genuine relationships to attain development. So there are conflicting views, however, regarding how individuals relate to each other in actual situations. There are positive ones and there are negative ones and there are things that are somewhere in between. So one view considers genuine relationships as difficult and almost impossible to attain. So the existence of this philosopher Jan Paul Sartre considers human relationships as prostrating and are often inauthentic and, un and ambiguous. So according to him, humans tend to view others as a means to achieve certain desires. So these views give rise to feelings of alienation where the individual ceases to view the other as a distinct and authentic person and considers him as a mere object. So Karl Marx believed that alienation gives rise to the exploitation of people. On the other hand, there are other there are philosophers who have a more positive view of human interaction and believe that humans naturally seek and are to achieve and maintain genuine meaningful relations with each other. Edith Stein defines the self other relationship as being driven by empathy. The awareness that the other is a person with thoughts and feelings. Uh, Midmond Husserl believes that intersubjectivity 
is more than just shared understanding, but is the capability to put oneself in the place where the other is. So Gabriel Marcel defines genuine relationship based on availability or the willingness of the person to be present and be at the disposal of another. Barber considers a human existence as a continual dialogue with the other and that the self becomes whole through interaction with nature, with other people, and with God. Also, the ethics of care uh, emphasizes the moral dimension of relationships and interactions. So this moral perspective encourages individual to see to the needs of other people, most especially the vulnerable which relates to the culture we have in Philippines. All in all, the human person is regarded by philosophy as a being with the other and that seeking and maintaining meaningful and harmonious relationships with others is necessary for personal development. So how does Christianity uh, define interpersonal relations? The Christian perspective considers human relations in the context of community. Human naturally seek fellowship with each other, to love one another, support each other, and minister to one another. Among the strongest bands are those that involve parents and their children, friends and the band, between man and wife. Even greater still is the relationship between God and man, which is defined as a fellowship and a covenant. In the Old Testament, God's relationship with mankind began with the creation, when God established man's ideal relationship, the union between man and woman. This initial relationship was frustrated with Adam and Eve's uh, disobedience and the killing of Abel by Cain, acts which violated the covenant of fellowship. But despite mankind's tendency to sin and defy God's commandments, God has at numerous times reiterated his original covenant. And Noah's salvation from the great flood, Abraham's journey to the promised land, the deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt, the Ten Commandments, and God's promise to David. In the New Testament, uh, Jesus Christ has redefined God's covenant through his death and resurrection. So Christ's teaching also emphasized the importance of fellowship among men. This is this embodies in his preaching where he encourages his followers to love your neighbor as yourself. And do unto others what you have done, what you would have them do unto you. And I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Which is the first commandment of all? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This Christian perspective in relations compel, compels us to be sympathetic, most especially to the least of our brethren. So the marginalized in society, particularly the poor and the disabled, are among those who should be considered as deserving of assistance, kindness, and care.